Shalom, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of Set Apart Cooking. I'm Brianna White, and this is Sarah Beth Ott. And today we are going to be making a traditional dessert called Hamantaschen. And this is because of the celebration of Purim, which you can find in the book of Esther. And so if you want to find out a little bit more about the background of Purim, you can go to the Wine to Our website. We have a Purim edition, which has great facts about it. Super great program. And we also have the recipe that we are going to be using today, um, which is right here for us. And we also have a second edition cookbook, and the recipe is also in there because we have uh, a whole Purim tab. So first and foremost, what is a hamantaschen? A hamantaschen is a cookie, sweet, can be made savory, but traditionally it's sweet, made with jellies of all different kinds, very traditional to use poppy or apricot, but we have some jalapeno pepper jelly over there that mm, I can't wait to try. <laughs> Sounds really good. <laughs> it, it, it will be, I am certain it will be. Um, so it's basically just a triangle cookie that is supposed to traditionally represent Hanan's hat. Um, so you just have the cookie and wrap it around and put the jelly inside in the reverse order, of course. Oh, great. That would be a little messy if we did it the other way. But, but don't worry, I'll show you. <laughs> okay, awesome. It, a picture's worth a thousand words. It's better to show you than try to tell you. Awesome. So what is our first step? Our first step is beating those eggs. So if you want to, put them in the bowl for me. And so it's four eggs for okay. our recipe. Correct. Very good. Four eggs. And then we've got one cup of oil coming next. So here is our oil, one cup. And I'm just gonna add that in. So we're adding our wet ingredients kind of first. <laughs> wet ingredients first. And I try to save the baking powder for last just because I want to have as much time as possible. This recipe is kind of touchy when it comes to timing. If you don't do everything quick enough at the right time, it tends to. You don't want the cookie to crumble. Well, crumble <laughs> or not shape right or just be a headache to work with, which uh, you will see later because I'm sure it's okay. I'm the only headache to work with here. <laughs> just kidding. You don't hurt my head. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so right, what so is next? Let me get the two teaspoons of vanilla. Please, some cold. Here it is. And then the salt. Salt? How much salt? Oh. It is half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of salt. And then we'll go ahead and get maybe a cup and a quarter of sugar. Okay. Cup and a quarter of sugar. Mm-hmm. Just gonna add that. All right, so next I need three teaspoons of baking powder. There you go. Thank you. And then, and you're ready for the fun part. The flour. All right, so we're going to slowly, we don't want to add it too fast. And actually, if you would give me that spatula. Here you go. So go ahead and give me first cup of flour. It doesn't have to be exact, but put that in there and I'll add it and we start mixing it slowly. I'll incorporate this, get it to a good texture, and then we can add more. So what are you wanting the texture of the dough to feel like and look like? I'm looking for, ideally for like Play-Doh. So it's a little bit too sticky right now, but I don't want it to be completely too dry. Too dry, yeah, it can't be dry, um, but it has to, it's a little bit, like just that little bit of like Play-Doh tacky, but not. So you can still move it around. Yeah, so it's still and spread it out. Moves. It'll stick to itself when we pinch it. Go ahead and add one more. It's part of the cookie is making the shape of the triangle so if it's too hard, you yes. won't be able to make the shape right. Very, very well said. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and at some point, even though it's still too sticky, it becomes impossible to work with, with a spatula. All right, so it is just about ready. I like it. Might still just be a little bit tacky, but it's almost perfect. So now I'm gonna move this out of the way. And if you would like to give me a dusting. Should I do it with my hands or this? Whichever one feels, you know, experiment. 
see which one gives you. It's okay to be a little bit of a thick dusting now because I don't want this to stick to the tape at all. Um, but I'll knead it a couple times more, make sure it's right. Again, I do not want to over knead it. And if I can get my rolling pin here in a second, it's actually really behaving nicely. It's like perfect. That blueprint. It's like a living thing that you have to be constantly paying attention to. Kind of like a baby. You don't want uh, you don't want to try to use all the flour at once because you'll need it as you go. And also, depending on the weather where you live, the altitude, the humidity, it may not need as much. You're looking for that perfect Play-Doh texture. All right, and now I'm gonna use a glass. It can be just a regular drinking glass, one about three inches, but you can change and do something smaller if you like, but this is the traditional one. And then I'm gonna just flour it and how thick do you want the dough to be when you roll it out? About, I think it's an eighth of an inch. I will show you. But it needs to be pretty thin, but not so thin that you won't be able to pinch it or, yeah. or fold it. We'll show two different ways. Yes. Pinching and folding. Pinching always looks nicer. Um, folding always looks nicer. Pinching allows you to put a lot more jelly in it. So it's what's your preference. Do you want it to be really good and full of jelly? Or do you want it to look really pretty? So I have a lot of room to play with this recipe and make it whatever you want. All right, so now it is time for the fun part. We're gonna get ready to fill our cookies. So I need, while well, I'm doing this, can you get me two spoons and our first filling. Oh, and we will need to spray the pan. Can we do that for me? Yes. Now we'll just put all of this off to the side. Get any extra off my hands so that it does not get in the way of pinching the cookie. Pinching is easiest when you do it when the dough is freshest. Toward the end, it gets harder to fold or it gets, it's easier to fold than to pinch. All right, so my two spoons. And I use two because otherwise you are tend to use your finger, which gets really messy. And the temptation to want to lick it off your finger. Well, there's that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna make this one a little bit fuller. You can experiment with using less to get a maybe more perfect cookie, but I'll show you all the different things that can go wrong with a cookie. Or you really can't go wrong because It'll still taste amazing. Oh yeah. All right, so I'm gonna try to get this right in the center because I need all the space around it. All right, and now you just wanna think about a triangle. So you're like taking a third on each side and then you're gonna pinch it together. But you don't wanna make it too thin or the cookie could burn. So don't pinch it all the way. You wanna just keep its shape or, or the depth to the cookie. So you're gonna pinch it. And I like to zip them up, kind of. There's also, you can, I'll show you another one, but they tend to open more. And then we'll make it. And especially with the more filling, it tends to open in the oven. Yes. There's our first one. And that's the pinching method. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll show you with this beautiful dough that wants to behave so nicely. what a little bit less looks like and why that might make it easier on a different folding method. So again, I'm gonna think about a triangle. Take a third and a third. This time I'm gonna, instead of pinching it, I'm gonna fold it over. Now I'm gonna take the last third and I can, at this point, if it doesn't quite look like a triangle, I can adjust them and rearrange it and then still you wanna pinch it a little bit. You're just kind of pressing down to make sure they stay together. And pinch the edges a little bit, but don't make it too thin or the dough won't cook uniformly and some parts will get burned. So what got you so good at making a cabbage 
Well, I know part of it was I used to work at a Jewish bakery. Mm -hmm. But strangely enough, I don't think we need home and Josh that often. <laughs> but was one day I was working as a nanny and trying to find things for the kids to do. And thought about, well, you know, porn was coming up, so let me give them like a little cultural experience. I talked to the parents, they were like, yeah, sure, do it. So we made the cookies together, had a blast. Well, dad came home and did what dads do and stole a cookie. And another, and another. And next thing I knew, I had a regular cooking job where they wanted me to make cookies every so many times a month. So I got really good at it. I want to show them side by side so they can really get an idea. Would you make the folded one for me? Yes. And I will, I'll make the pinched one. I like to make sure there's no flour on top because it gets in the way of pinching them. So then they'll really get to see what they both look like side by side. How I work. All right, you're folding. Beautiful. Yay. It's probably the best one I made. <laughs> I guess it takes a practice. I want to make sure I really pinch it so that when the jelly gets hot and starts running everywhere, it doesn't leak out and make the cookie open. All right. Make sure I'm so I'm mine. So I'm going to go like this. Come on. Okay. And so this is the folded one, and this is the pinched one. The zipped up the side, as I like to call it. <laughs> I don't think that's the proper way to say it, but. All right, so alternatively, you can also make really little ones. They're really cute. So like this one, and they're just really fun. Can we do Nutella this time? Yes. Let's have some fun with some Nutella. So if you want to make these for your little ones, and they like Nutella, you can always add that because the filling can be whatever you want. That's the fun part about these cookies. My favorite part about Nutella is it doesn't make as big a mess in the cooking process. It's messier in this moment, but for you, ain't it? And we'll also have another untraditional flavor, the jalapeno pepper jelly, if you like a little spice. It's really something that you can do whatever you want with. Mm. For these, you don't want to put too much filling because they're so tiny. Yes. A little goes a long way. You're like, that much? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more, but that'll work. Just a little bit. And so as the dough is getting older, it's a little harder. Is that your pinched version? Yes. So here's the difference between the little ones. Here's my folded and pinched. So cute. Oh, they smell so good. Love the spice. Okay. And lastly, we're going to be making some prune ones. And this is one of the more traditional flavors, but very good. Just a little bit. You want, me, you want to do that one? Yes, sure. I'll try to do the pinch method. You can I'll do the folding one then. I think something about these cookies is really you can do whatever you want with them. You can make them big, you can make them small, you can have whatever filling you want. So they're super fun to make. And those are the prune ones, the two different so ways. Cute. All right, so now that we've filled all of our cookies, which they look so beautiful on the tray with all the different colors. Oh, they're gorgeous. I love the minis, they're so cute. And we've made sure that they are all evenly spaced. That way they don't get stuck together and you can easily remove them from the tray. You need to preheat your oven to 350. And depending on your oven, so they're all a little different. You're going to put them in for 20 to 30 plus minutes, but you're looking for the edges to just start to turn a little bit golden brown, um, especially if your dough wasn't perfect, which does happen. You might have some that are really thin and they might burn. So be, be aware of that. You might want to pull those out a little sooner, but just 
keep an eye on them. They, they tend to do things they're not supposed to, if not watched closely. <laughs> All right, let's put them in the oven. So we really enjoyed getting to make these hamantashen. It's really nice once you get them out of the oven, getting to put them on the tray. It should be this golden brown color, like we said earlier, but you can kind of see how the edges are a little bit golden brown. Um, I think it's just really wonderful to see all the different colors on the tray, and you can have fun putting the minis whatever way you want. I added this little circle. Um, so here's the minis and the bigger ones, and I think we had a lot of fun in the process of making them, and then you also get to really enjoy tasting them afterwards. And having fun with friends. Having fun with friends. So what are some little bloopers that can happen when making the cookies? So this one, we got a little bit too full and it bubbled out. This is not bad. Um, it can you do a little bit worse than that, but that's what it might look like. It might do, that's perfectly normal. It'll still taste, ah! Here. so it'll still taste amazing. Or we can have this one, it kind of got over full and the dough did not cooperate, so it didn't shake quite right. Still will taste amazing. And then the last two bloopers, I'll give you an idea. This one, the dough got too thin, so you can tell it burned a little bit more, and you can almost see the jelly coming through there. So, you know, that's why we try to get the right depth. And then this one got shaped a little bit funny, so this one's got really tiny and kind of burned a little bit but not too bad. It's just not shaped perfectly, but it'll still taste good. Thank you guys so much for watching our Side of the Park cooking episode. And we had a lot of fun making these, and now we will get to enjoy eating them.